Welcome back to the Blackstar video. Thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to talk about cryptocurrency. Is it currency? Is it not? Fiat? What's that? What's going on? Anyway, complicated issue. Friend is asking me about it. Let's talk about it. Let's get it. So I'm going to try and make this topic as simple as I can without getting, getting too complicated about it. On um, what is cryptocurrency? Is it currency? Is it an asset? What, what the hell is it? So let's just get into it. So in all actuality, true currency is money developed by a government or entity that is used by that nation and or entity to run its, its debt system, its payment systems, and for its people to use, just like the U.S. dollar. So things are calculated in dollars, right? Cents, pennies, quarters, all fractionalized, was considered fungible because you can exchange a dollar and break it down for quarters, pennies, nickels, and dimes, and then reestablish the dollar by taking those same coins, pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters, and make a dollar whole again. So that makes it fungible. Does cryptocurrency in its form, its current form, is it fungible? Yes, it is in 10 times more fungible than a regular dollar because it goes into micro payments, meaning that you can get less than a penny. So why is cryptocurrency not currency in the US? Because it's not backed by the government to say that it is legal tender, and let's take a look. So before we get into legal tender, we talk about fiat. So fiat is money not backed by physical commodities such as gold, instead it is government backed. Most popular currencies today are fiat currencies. Fiat money value is based on relationship between supply and demand. Fiat holds value because people's faith in the nation's currency. So in essence, the US, like for an example, the US dollar is in high demand all over the world. It's actually the world currency. The ruble, the Russian dollar is not, or the Chinese yen or Asian yen or whatever you want to call it, is not a world currency. So supply and demand for it is very weak. So its valuation versus our US dollar is bleak in comparison. But when you talk about the British pound or the euro, within those ecosystems is in higher demand than our US dollar. So in essence, it's worth more. So getting further into it, the benefit of fiat money is that it gives central banks greater control over economy as they control how much money is printed. Inflation may occur when governments create too much of a fiat currency and the money supply increases too rapidly as a result. Government printing too much money can create hyperinflation. And that's kind of what we have in the U.S. right now with all the money printing during the pandemic. But we weren't the only ones, so we're not feeling the ramifications of that because all the other countries also hyperinflated their systems, which kind of make our situation look bleak in comparison. So we don't really get the effects of hyperinflation Hopefully not now or ever, but it may happen, right? There may be a chance that that does happen, but we, we will see the effects of like recessions. I don't believe a depression, but a recession is looming over our heads because of the high interest rates and what have you. So anyway, let's talk about legal tender. Legal tender is any form of payment recognized by a government used to pay debt or financial obligations such as tax payments, national currencies such as the U.S. dollar are legal tender. In the U.S., the Treasury is authorized to create and issue dollars to the public. Federal Reserve notes and coins are recognized legal tender in the U.S. The law ensures nothing other than official legal tender gains enough traction to be used as money in the economy. Notably, checks and credit cards aren't legal tender. Rather, they are money substitutes. So what are they saying? So your check and your credit cards are just forms of getting access to legal tender, which in this case, US dollars, right? So it's backed by the government, issued by the government for people to use within this ecosystem, our economy, the US of A, and you can go and buy stuff and everybody has to take it, right? Because it's the nation's legal tender. They have to take it no matter what it is. You can bring a million pennies over to the grocery store. They have to take it. They can't deny it because it's legal tender. In the case of crypto, quote unquote, currency is not currency because it's not considered legal tender, nor is it fiat, right? It's not tangible money. You can't touch it. It's not fiat, but it is a form of an asset but not a currency. And the example here is, is shown is why it's not, it's not backed by government. The only government to back Bitcoin or, or a cryptocurrency at this time is El Salvador, I believe. And we'll get into that in a second. 
But until crypto is recognized as legal tender within one nation, then it has to be recognized by all the nations because it needs to be exchangeable between that nation and every other nation, right? So our U.S. dollars can get converted over to Russia's rubles or China's yens or Japanese yen or whatever the case may be. We, we, they would have to exchange it because it's, it's a nation's legal tender and they have to negotiate with each other, work with each other, right? So in this case, you're still going to argue, well, we all call it a currency. Why isn't it not currency? Because it holds value and it holds value in U.S. dollars currently. So because it holds value in U.S. dollars, we kind of believe that it's currency. It can be exchanged between two people, but so can you take an item that you have and exchange it for U.S. dollars as well. And that's what makes it an asset, right? A car isn't legal tender, your shorts, collectible items, and those things all hold value in dollars. You can exchange them from one to one person for something else in return, but it's still not legal tender. It's still not currency, right? We still can't go to the bodega and buy coffee. You can't go to Walmart and buy whatever you need out of Walmart. You know, some, there are some forms of transferring crypto into, into currency, using debit cards and, and what have you, but it's still not there. You still hold the obligation tax-wise every time you convert your crypto to go pay for something in currency, right? For example, if you had ADA, and I'm, you know, we're all part of the ADA ecosystem here, so we talk about ADA on this channel more or less, and let's say you had ADA. You had 1,000 ADA, ADA's worth a dollar. You bought ADA at current price, 44 cents, 45 cents, and now you want to take your gains and you want to go buy something. You have a debit card. Coinbase has gave you a debit card and you convert your ADA to go buy whatever you need. You want to go buy a TV. You take your debit card. You stay swipe it. Coinbase converts your ADA over to US dollars and it gives it to the merchant. The merchant accepts the payment. Why? Because it got converted to dollars and it happens. At the end of the year, now you have to pay taxes. On the $560 that you gain, in surplus money, right, from your gains of ADA going from $0.44 cents to, to a dollar, you got to pay the tax on that now. You can't alleviate that. So it's not currency. It's not considered currency by any nation. So when the dollar is inflated in value, when we go and exchange them, we never pay the inflation rate, right, or the hyper rate. We just pay dollar for dollar. The dollar gets a little stronger and we might be able to buy more with it. But that's about it. In the case that crypto is currency, it's not. If anybody tells you that, they really don't know what they're talking about and they're just following the trend of what they've learned so far rather than truly looking into what crypto is. So right now, crypto is just an asset by American laws and other nations other than El Salvador, and it's just an asset. It's just like your house. You buy or a piece of property. You buy a house, you buy a building, you buy some land, it increases in value, or you buy stock, it increases in value, you sell it, you pay the taxes on your capital gains, and then you keep moving on. Like if you bought a stock, you pay your capital gains tax, and you keep moving on. But also on the, on the back end, if you get a capital loss, it depreciates in value, you sell it, you get to write that off on your taxes. All right? The government gives you a chance to write off anything you, that depreciates in value that it considers also, uh, uh, an event that's tax-wise that could possibly give you a gain, could also give you the loss. And you so I'll read this last part. Special considerations, cryptocurrencies are not considered money, except for use, example, in most parts of the world, as it does not have legal tender. However, El Salvador became the first country in the world to accept Bitcoin as legal tender in June of 2021. Not a nation, it's a country, so not many people are going to accept it. Plus, El Salvador was shamed for it. They, they would look bad for making this action, although it has become very beneficial for its country. So now El Salvador, I believe they have the U.S. dollar and Bitcoin as legal tender. Businesses and the governments have to take it to pay taxes, buy items, whatever the case may be. Not too many people are thrilled about that in El Salvador because Bitcoin has the possibility of depreciating in value quite rapidly and also raising in value quite rapidly. But they don't like the aspect that it can depreciate in value rapidly. So that's it for this video. I hope that I helped you kind of understand the difference between crypto now. Crypto is actually an amazing asset to hold. Uh, in my personal opinion, it's better than stocks. Can't give you financial advice. You do what you want to do. I would suggest to my friends always to have some type of crypto to hold on to. It's a very new asset class making huge headways and 
it has been good to me, so I can't say it's bad. It has done better for me than the stock market has in all my years. I'm 50 years old now, and in my little time of investing, it has done way better for me than any other stock I've ever bought. So that's it for this video. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you watching this video. If you can, please hit that like button. If you want to get notified every time I make a video, please hit that bell notification. Subscribe to the channel. Support your boy, Blackstar. We are the light in the darkness. Peace.